Hi, this is Stacy Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a special guest today. This is Mark Amell, and he is a uh, special expert on our show. He has his own podcast series on our show. He works as, in marketing consultant, and he helps many businesses, especially small businesses, grow into larger, more successful businesses. And he has um, already have done previous podcasts, so I suggest you go on his page. I'll have his link so you could listen to his previous um, podcast but he's going to talk a little about today about um about some of the things that he does and how he's grown to be such a big and successful individual in the marketing uh industry so you were talking like right before the show we started talking about ai and how ai has is is such a big thing today and that you actually in the 80s you were working on various programs and you started you know um the programming for ai um and then how you compare it to ceo and how you know and you were saying how ceo is still important because there's a lot of rumors today that you know they say well ceo is going to die it's gonna you know it's going to be all ai and we were talking about how we kind of differ in, in, in opinion about that. And maybe we could start off about telling people a little about yourself because your story and your education and knowledge is, is amazing. And maybe we can just start to talk about AI and, and how you got into AI and, and your feelings about AI and CEO. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, oh, you're welcome. Where I started, I was on a, a full scholarship for the Air Force, ROTC scholarship. I have multiple engineering and math degrees. Um, I was lucky to get offered a project for the military to bring the first artificial intelligence project to the military. So this was in the 80s. So I, we had I've been kind of on the forefront. I've watched Google grow up in how they do their search algorithms because yeah. they were um, just starting and then taking over Bing and Yahoo at the time. Right. Um, I see a lot of parallels in AI now because Google's coming out with Baird uh, next. Well, they're working on it now, but coming out with it. And it's the same kind of trajectory. Google let the search engines get their established, they watched them, what they were doing right and wrong. And then um, they came in and did something better. So yeah. I see that. Um, as far as what AI is, AI is really made up of three pieces. And today they're calling everything AI. But mm -hmm. you have your database, you have your profiles, and you have your user interface, you want the user to be able to ask questions. So you have to analyze those questions. But you also have a database and Google has the largest database of what people are inquiring about. Yeah. And then you have your profiles. So if I go in, I want to buy a dishwasher. They're looking at my past history of purchases. They're looking at people that are my same age, same economic class, and they're making, they're selling those ads and you start seeing them pop up all over the place, but they're making an educated guess on what they think that your choice should be to give you the best answers. Right. A lot of this, a lot of software now is being called AI is just a database lookup. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to look how much do they understand the person asking the question how much do they understand the question right so relating that to SEO is when you buy something you in this world of internet nobody talk, goes into a store and talks to anybody right so you want to you want to verify. So before you buy, it's no like and trust. You're going to, you want to understand that person. You want to know if you can trust them, what experience, especially if you're on a high ticket audience. So you go to Google and you, you ask about this person. You want to try to look it up. Mm -hmm. SEO is helping you find all the information about that person. That's what SEO does. Right. So if you're missing without SEO, you're just going by what an email or your phone conversation or something is with that person. 
you need it SEO to not only get you information about the product and service, but also about the people that you're dealing with. Right. So it's important to be, um, give Google the information. And that's what SEO really is. It's search engine optimization, but it's giving Google the information it needs to promote you. Yes. And it, it's very strict about the rules because you know, I don't know what is probably not the right saying, but, you know, Google's prime directive is to give the best answer possible. Right. So when it's gathering information about you and, you know, wanting to know who you are, whether they can trust you, um, it all goes into that SEO part and building the foundation of your company. Right. So when SEO is built up of local search engines. There's 50 to 70 different local directories. Mm -hmm. It's built up of review management. You know, have people that give you the reviews. Do you ask for reviews? You know, do you have five reviews from your friends and family and your competition has a hundred? Yeah. Um, but also as important is how do you, do you answer the reviews? If somebody gives you a nice review, do you go on and say thank you? Right. You know, um, if somebody gives you a bad review, and I've seen this, you know, do you get up and jump and yell at that screen <laughs> that person and all? And somebody reading that review, are they going to want to deal with your company? Exactly. You know? So you have to come around and say, you know, I'm sorry you had a bad experience. What can I do to make it better? But you want to make those pe those people are learning about you. Google's learning about you. Yeah. So it's it's all putting in that foundation of a of a business to get people to find you, to understand you and see if you want to do business. Right. I agree totally with you. I, I think, you know, I think it's great that they have AI and that AI can help you in some areas of your business and make things easier for you. But then you have to have unique content and you know and it has to be written in the right way and we were talking about what is the right way and um we were talking about you know pain points description solution and then getting right to the point either the product the service clicking onto something to take you somewhere else and you also were mentioning that it's very important if you have a business also when they find your business to keep them on your website Many people don't write, make their websites the way they should and people will click on and they'll click off and then they're real, wondering why they're not getting sales or they're not getting traffic, but it could be the way they're either setting up their website or the words they're using, how they're writing. Correct. And it's, it's, that's very true. And I give you an example, but um, there's AI to be you using AI can give you ideas. It can give you outlines. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically, you could do the same thing with a Google search and get different articles and read it. It's helped summarize it. But if you copy and paste a result, there's softwares out there now, including what Google uses to say, no, this was AI generated or yeah. this was copied from another website. And it's, um, you know, copyright infringement, people getting sued. Um, yes. In Italy, they turned off ChatGPT for months because of invasion of privacy data. Oh, really? So it's, they're being watched. What happened with ChatGPT is their data ended at 2021 and they had everything all indexed and looking nice and everything, but the world's changed over the last couple of years. Yes. So, and they started getting millions of dollars thrown at them and their programmers are like, okay, we're just going to take whatever we can get instead of doing the right things behind it is from what I see as a programmer. Oh, I agree a hundred percent with you. And, you know, Google and many other organizations um, that do any type of publishing or writing or even journalism, um, they have gotten very strict. They're using those type of softwares to to see if you have a copy and paste, you know, piece from AI because they don't want that. They want unique content, and they could easily now 
go through it and they can actually, you know, tell if this was just a copy and pasted piece just from AI with no uniqueness and they will reject it. And I've seen, you know, they've gotten very strict. And even when you try to do that with Google, you could end up actually having your website or, you know, go rank really low because your trust level goes downhill when they yep. see that you're copy and pasting all from AI. I'll give you another example. I had, I talked to a lady in California and she was born and raised in Quebec speaking French. And she said that she was going to use chat GPT because she wanted to have a better English. Right. Her articles. And I told her, says, what happens when people read your articles and, and they're getting to know you that way? Then they talk to you on your phone and <laughs> your English is fine, but you're, you know, but it's going to, you're going to lose that authenticity because yeah. in that you're fooling them. That's a very good point because if you if you perceive yourself as a certain way on the internet and then all of a sudden someone calls you to try to make a sale with you and the person that they they thought they were talking to or that they perceived by your writing, by the way you set things up, the 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 you know the quotes and the bullets you put and all of a sudden they see that the person that they're perceiving that characteristic, you know, is is not there. You know, I'm talking to someone yeah. completely different. The trust level gets, I think, gets killed right there. And then so does your business. Yeah, with um, talking to everybody over the internet now, instead of going into the stores, you have to build their trust. Yeah. And people are looking for any reason not to. But um, getting to your point on, uh, the time on the website is important and it's one of the things that is driving LinkedIn's massive change. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their time on LinkedIn is like seven and a half minutes, but something like TikToks is 90 minutes. But wow. they're getting a people, a lot of people complaining that they're getting um, people quote, and this is what I had for dinner on LinkedIn. Yeah, and LinkedIn is trying to clean all that up to be uh, as when they started, you know, a place to be able to get jobs. People put their data, yeah, their companies put the type of people that they're looking to hire, right? And not necessarily for a job, but it's a great way to talk to people about your business, business to business, right? For people that are serious and they're they're going through a, a massive change and now is the time to get on that, that curve as yeah. they're changing. Cause you're going to be, you know, out there being one of the first to being one of them there, you're going to get a lot more traffic because people are, this is what people are getting onto LinkedIn for, for business, right. to business and how they're shifting everything to it. So it's, um, as the person I was talking to said, you know, people that you even sign up and you connect with and stuff. And he says, you know, I connect with my mother on Facebook, but I won't connect to her on LinkedIn because she skews my business profile to the people I want to connect with. Right. And he might be, you know, a little strict, but he's, you know, he's a mathematician, right? He's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a really good guy, but he's, he's making a point. Yeah. And I think his point is well received. I think, you know, people have to realize that um, every platform is different. And we were talking about this early on, you know, and LinkedIn is really to connect with other people and create jobs and create projects and build businesses between relate business relationships between one another. And, you know, my, my LinkedIn grew because I focused on business and I focused on my strengths and I focused on connecting with people that could use my strengths and can use my my abilities. And you can't, you know, if you want to have a, a, a fun conversation, then you have to go to Facebook or I have to go to one of those platforms. It's, you know, each platform has different age groups, different levels of education, different people with different perspectives, you know, and it's really, you can't just copy and paste one piece and think that you could put it on every single platform. It's it's not like that at all. I'll have, I talked to a gentleman that um, 
takes like 401ks and put it into this change to the stock market and puts the money into it for people that are like over 50 that have a million dollars. Right. So he hired this marketing company that is doing his marketing on TikTok. <laughs> and he's like, I haven't gotten anybody to respond yet. <laughs> Where do you think your audience is? <laughs> Yeah, it's mostly young kids, you know, looking or people that are looking just for funny videos, you know, because that's yeah. really what they're known for. So I was just another example of things I run into all the time. Yeah, I think I think people have to really like you said, uh, you made a good point early on is that you really have to, you know, not get to know them on a on a more uh, personal level before you actually invest in, in, in working with a company, because like you said, they could AI everything and it could be a completely different type of, you know, person behind behind the screen working. And you think you're hiring one type of person again. You're, you're, you know, you could be hiring someone completely different than you perceive because of AI. So, you know, AI has its advantages, but it seems like it has a lot of disadvantages too. And, you know, what are some tips you could you give to people that you think could help people? Because AI is really, it's, it's right now, it's booming in our system. You know, people, people are using it all over the place, but how do business owners not get, ripped off and not and and find the right people like yourself so they could grow and they could actually become successful businesses use the use the tools that are there to authenticate you know articles right or, you know this one is ai if you read enough articles you're going to see that some of the things are not not in place yeah you know? mm -hmm. um but until you get to that point, you know, get the tools are pretty inexpensive to say, I really like what this person said and, you know, read it or, and then also once you talk to that person, you know, take questions out of it and see yeah. if they can answer the questions that they wrote about. I like that. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And you were you were also saying like um previously you had um talked to me about um you know some a lot of these people you see people trying to say that they're a business and this and that and invest in this and you know you really should do your research you were telling me and if you can't find that person on the internet obviously they're fake and you have to you have to really do your research is one of the things that you were mentioned to me early on. Can you expand on that? Because I think that's one thing that so many people get ripped off by falling for these companies that really aren't real companies and they throw their money at these people and they end up not growing, not profiting, and, and they end up with a hole in their pocket. Yeah, you know, with the with the buying cycle is, you know, a small business say they ignore marketing. Um and they're they're getting by, so that's okay. Then they come down to a road where they need to get sales, and it's more of a desperation. So they look for an answer, and it takes forever to learn a lot of this marketing stuff. You know, and that's yeah. why I have a class. Mm -hmm. um, but you get to that desperation point, and somebody comes in, and these professional salespeople, right. You know, they they do all kinds of smoke and mirror and they they build that trust and there's there's scripts out there that salespeople can use to talk you out of your money yeah and I've met a lot of people you know they're you know just basically crying saying I gave away my last ten thousand mm. dollars you know and I feel bad about that and that's one of the reasons I wanted to fix it but what you need to do is research use google to do the seo use chat gpt even to ask what question should i ask somebody but i don't with zoom out there like we're on zoom right now there's yeah. no reason that you can't talk face to face with a person right and exactly. i'll give you one example i liked what this one person was saying in their emails writing back and forth and i said okay let's get on a zoom and you know meet and they said, oh, my camera's broken. And their logo was this very pretty young Asian lady. <laughs> and I was like, 
wait a minute, this voice doesn't match. You know, if you want to do business, um, let me know when you get your camera fixed. <laughs> <laughs> How can you trust that? You can't. You can't. And, you know, it's it's also about learning. You know, it's if you're looking for cheap, you know, you're going to attract cheap people. If you want to look professional, um, you know, I've worked out of my house for 35 years and my outfit of choice was a t-shirt and shorts, mm -hmm. you know, but now I try to put on a collar and, you know, look, look a little bit better, you know, listen to the people that you're talking. You're going to find out a lot more by listening to the person, yeah. asking them questions and see what their plan is. You know, if they're not willing to answer basic questions, right. You probably don't want to deal with them. So the good side on technology is with Zoom and other ways that you can really get to know somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's funny that you say that because there's so many times because I, I converse with so many different people and in business on Zoom and, you know, you'll see their picture and then you'll meet them on Zoom and it's two different people. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, that's not the person that you showed me on the, you know, when I went on your site, you know, and it's, it's your trust level goes out the door, you know, and like you said, you know, even your dress, like first impression, I always say is, is your, the last impression. People always make judgment the first time they meet you. And if you don't, you know, if you don't give a good impression and you're not honest, you're not sincere, you're not, you know, dressed well, people, people are going to not, you know, trust you and they're not going to actually, you know, have that ability to actually take the next step with you in your, in your business. Yeah. You've got to give them a reason to trust you. You got to give them a, a reason to know that they can solve your problem. Right. What it, what is keeping your customer, like you were talking about pain points, what's keeping your customer from not sleeping in, right. enough that they want to solve the problem? So you've got to bond with them. You've got to tell them that you understand their problem and you've got to convince them that you have the right solution. Yes. To answer that. So it's those step, those process. Um, yes. You know, and I can give you a short story about me is that I'm very much an introvert. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like crowds. I don't like being around a lot of people and mm -hmm. being, you know, working out of the house for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk to my customers and I have a 20 year customer retention, so I don't have to talk to people. Right. And I joined this group, Alignable, but we have breakout rooms, a one-on-one, -on -one, which works, you know, yeah. it's your one-on-one, -on -one, but um, in June, I went to 30, smart connects the one-on-one -on -one groupings and I talked to 150 people oh wow and that was just to practice what I was saying and practice listening and it, it's you know those those of you that are introverts know what I'm talking about but it takes an effort and it oh. takes self-awareness to get better but you can do it you know I I did it in a week because that was my mission I turned off my business for a week and said no, I'm going to learn how to do this. Yeah. And you know what? It, 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 when it all boils down to it, it's just a fear, you know, that we create in our own minds. And, you know, we could overcome anything, I think. You know, we just have to change our mindset. And like you said, you created a goal for yourself. You you shut your business off for one week and you focused on your mission and you accomplished it. And that's so important, even in business too, for people to do things like that. And I, I remember, you know, when I first started speaking, you know, there were times where I had to speak in front of large groups when I first started, and that could be very intimidating. <laughs> and I remember them just like, you know, uh, we would be behind the curtain and it was my turn to go up and speak. They just pushed me <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and then right away, the audience was staring at me. I had no choice but to you know, to say whatever I needed to say and do whatever I needed to do. But, you know, anyone could break through their fears, you know, and I think you've made a lot of great points. You talked about, you know, that we can't just because, you know, AI is trending right now. It doesn't mean that it's actually something that you have to you put all your peas in a pod in that area. You, you know, you, you need a blend of things. 
And then yeah. you really need to really listen, you know, look at the content and look at who you're talking to and really focus. Is this person real? Am, you know, who am I giving my money to, you know, and, and also, you know, how Google and how so many other, you know, big, big platforms are really scoping out, you know, what's real and what's not real. And you could end up really hurting your business by just focusing on AI. It could be a, a helpful tool, but it's not something that you should put all your eggs in one basket in is from what I'm, I'm understanding from what you're saying. When I've, I've talked to um, people that worked at Google and they were, I'm sorry. That's okay. They were saying that, you know, they spend probably half their money or more, not more trying to catch people. I believe it. You know, they are, so, you know, I had a friend that worked in um, Google and uh, they, they said, you know, something very similar to what you were saying. Yeah, it's, um, you know, they going back to their prime directory, if they want to give the best answer, they want to look for the best answer and mm -hmm. they want to validate that. So, um, yeah, I had, I've had people that were other SEO techniques that were making a fortune selling off going around the corner techniques. And when Google caught them there, their traffic died to nothing. Yeah. And and that's one of the things I think why Google got so stern was that there was too much fake news out there and there was too many people scamming the system. And so they had to figure out ways to really get you know, really um, on it. And, and, and because they, they wanted, you know, from what I understand is Google really wanted their, um, their platform their you know, to be something that people could rely on for, you know, um, valuable sources of information. And they didn't want to be known as a, a browser that what, you know, that provided fake news and they didn't want people to be misled, you know, and then we were talking about how the algorithm always changes and how everything consistently changes. And that, you know, you know, one scam might work for a little while, but eventually, like you said, it's going to die out and then you're going to end up going to nothing. Yeah, they want to give the Google earned its reputation and passed the other search engines by giving the best answers. Yeah. And it, it anybody that tries to cheat it, you know, they're they're just hurting Google's reputation and they take that serious. Yeah. And you got to respect them for that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You still need to re you still need to research your answers and they're going to pull up some wrong, wrong answers once in a while, but um, you, you, they, they at least are may attempting to give you the right answer. Yes. Okay. You can use these other tools just to give you outlines, to give you ideas. Mm -hmm. There's also a section when you search on Google that says people also ask. And there's a lot of information in there. Um, Google does, you know, for other searches, Google also has something called trends.google.com. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it, no. it, what it does is you can even select what industry, but it gives you the most popular topics at the time. Oh, really? So if I'm going to write an article for a um, plumber, I'm going to select category service industry, and I'm going to see what people are searching for, what's trending in the news. Right, right. And I can then write a, write my article towards that trending. Instead right. of thinking about a topic out of my side that's already getting search traffic. Right. That's a very good idea. And we were also talking about um, scraping the web and then getting ideas through that. And um, can you can you get on, can you explain to people what scraping the web and, and uh, means? Because I don't think everybody understands that concept. Well, there's tools that will go out and you can set it to LinkedIn, Facebook or um, websites. And if you, I do a lot, of, do a lot of websites and I'll put in keywords and what I can get returned is I can get websites and email addresses for those keywords. And then I can go out and start contacting those people because it's helping me re research who, who is, um, a, got authority in those areas. Right. So right. there's a bunch of tools that can do that. 
you know, um, there's extract data, there's uh, D7 from promptings, mm -hmm. you know, that will give you those, will give you thousands of emails, but then the cold email you want to be careful about because there is, there's coming restrictions on how you do cold emails. Like I use it, like I've developed over three years, I can do 500,000 cold emails a month. Oh, wow. But you have to have everything in the right place. Yeah. There's more and more spamming filters that are trying to catch people. I know? noticed that with newsletters too. They've, they've gotten very strict. The rules have changed about sending out newsletters to people. And I think it, I think if after a certain bounce rate, it goes into spam, you know, they're, they're being very cautious about people trying to spam other people. And like you said, the cold emails also. So there's two, there's two functions, there's two filters, two funnels. Uh, one is um, sales funnel where I put all my cold lead leads into it. Once I talk to somebody, then I put them into a CRM. Mm -hmm. which is all the people I've talked to. And then I stay with my monthly newsletter, but also when they first go in, if they haven't bought, I'll do like every three days, I'll send them. But I know those are validated because I've talked to them. Right. And if the sales funnel blows up, you know, it blows up and we set up another one, but the CRM, you don't want to have blow up. And I'll give you an example. One very popular CRM. I put in eight, 5,000 previously opened multiple times email addresses and it hit a bounce rate of like half a percent mm -hmm. and they shut off my email for three days. Oh, wow. Just so, by that small percentage? Just by that small percentage of bounce rates. So you don't want to, your CRM, your customer retention um, management tool, you know, you want to have that very clean with your customers. And if something happens like that, you can say, no, this is a long time customer. I've sent them right. like 20 emails and you can argue it. Um, that's why you want to keep a separate, you know, definite curtain between the two. Right. Now, you know, CRM is very important. Now, not everybody understands what CRM is and um, you know, even myself years ago, I, I took a course on a CRM and, you know, it was a very intense course on how, what it is, how to use it, you know, how to utilize it the best way. And uh, it is a, an amazing tool because once you start to utilize it, um, you could actually keep track of your customers, potential customers, you know, how far you got along with them. You could you could learn about, um, you know, how much you could potentially make with this customer. And then you can keep track of how far along you've gotten with the customer. Now, with with um, for me, I, I started using Go High Level for my CRM. But can you explain to people what CRM is? Because like before before I took that course to learn about CRM and, and have the person teach me CRM, I didn't even know what it was. I was doing things a little bit old school, you know, and I, I guarantee you there are plenty of business people still doing things old school. But once you learn CRM and once you start utilizing it, it can make your business so much more profitable because you're really understanding what's going on in your business. Can you explain it a little bit better to people so they understand? So let's give a, a short example first in that I had a, I had a guy come out and detail my car. And every month I get a newsletter for the current special mm -hmm. you know, on detailing cars. So yeah. if I want to detail my car, Ken, or more importantly, if I have somebody that, you know, I walk up to and say, hey, your car's dirty. I got a detailer. No, I wouldn't do yeah. that. But, um you know, I can recommend them, give referrals right. out. I had a person come and do an amazing job, good price on my garage door. I had a guy that came and did my front lawn, fixed my lawnmower. I mean, he did an amazing job, but I haven't heard from any of them, either of those two. I can't refer them. Right. I can't even call them again when I, when I need them. So what a CRM does is it allows you to stay in touch with your customers, not only track your past history, you know, and if you put in notes that says they have, you know, three kids and two dogs, you know, you can ask how the family is, things like that too. Right. 
to show that you have a relationship going. But if you send out every month a newsletter or you know something of value that they're going to open to them, they're going to remember who you are and they're going to remember to refer you. Yeah. Um, it's, I went back and there was, again, going back to Alignable and all these connections and everything. And I went back to the beginning and said, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. How are you doing? The next day I had two major sales from people that I hadn't talked to in a couple months. Right. And that's, that's how important it is, is to stay in touch, keep your, um, keep your relationship growing. Cause it is a relationship. Everybody's busy, but if you're giving them something of value, you want to do it. You know, if you want to send it out on the first of the month, you know, great. If you want to go every two weeks, you know, write down your, what topics you want to do. Yeah. But um, that's really the main purpose of a CRM. You can do it by putting, you know, into your a subdirectory and Gmail or something and sending everything out. Right. But the CRMs, you know, allow you to track a lot more data and put it all in one place. And you can go to your CRM if you can look up you know, send a keyword and it'll find, you know, the five people that match that keyword. Right. So it, it it's really about keeping that relationship going. No, and, I think that's so important. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, I, you give them a few tips and say, Hey, I, uh, Stacy released a new podcast for me. You know, here's the link, go take a look at it. You yeah. know, something that, I can send out to everybody, you know, I have a monthly, I have a free management class and I send out to everybody, even if they've been there before I says, Hey, you know, if, you know, come in to the free management class. So, could you tell people a little bit more about that management class? I think it's an awesome management class. I've, I've seen it and um, I really, uh, I like what you teach in those classes. Can you tell people a little about it and where they can actually find it? Yeah, there's a web, there's a landing page called 30 ways to market.com. And every month I have a free hour and then I stay as long as there's questions. Um, it's you just if you sign up and register, if you're unable to make it, um, mm -hmm. I'll send you a copy of it and then probably do a follow up email and say, you know, did you get it? What do you think? But um, it allows you to get an overview, that 30,000 foot view of manage of marketing. Right. And then at the end, I have different classes, you know, um, monthly charges for a class. My goal is to help a thousand small businesses in the next 10 years before I retire. So that's how I use part of it is yeah. coming to the class. You know, it's, it's 197 a month. I give homework. I have a weekly class. And if you want questions, you know, just let me know about your marketing. Right. So it's, it's a way that I can help as many people as possible, small businesses, because that's why I got into this to start with. Right. Um, you know, I also have a um a challenge. Hopefully it comes out right. I said if I can't find you know, let's get on a Zoom call. If I can't find out what's stopping your marketing in 15 minutes, I'll give you a free hour consultation. We'll find mm -hmm. the problems. Yeah. And it's it's really it's kind of easy for me because there's three pieces, your foundation that we talked about today, mm -hmm. you know, SEO, where people can find you, the sales funnel, and then the CRM, keeping, retaining customers, Right. You know, how I got a 15 year, 20 year customer retention, you know, so we, if you don't have one of those pieces, you know, people can't find you if you don't have a, a, a sales funnel then they just jump to your website it's like looking for a roofing hammer at a hardware store and you got a hundred a hundred different hammers you're, you're making them do all the work and then yeah if you don't stick with them that's another piece of it maybe we'll talk about those on a future podcast but yeah um if you want to come to the marketing class i think it gives you a good overview because 
all the companies that I've worked with, that I gurued with, um, they focus on two or three out of my 30 ways. Right. And they can do that because their customers can throw a million dollars a month at an ads campaign. Right. So I try to tell you about all 30. We do a strategic plan, which pieces that you need to do in right order to help your small business in a yeah. low risk, low cost way. But the first step is coming to that, you know, free, free class. It's a hour. And then mm -hmm. as long as you want to ask questions, but um, at least see what the world looks like kind of in, in simple, simple terms. Right. So I think, I think sometimes just making just small changes, small little tweaks in your business could actually sometimes help your business explode. What do you think? I do. And, you know, besides, you know, it's a, it's a target. I had somebody that was selling $400 a month software, um, but they were targeting s new small businesses that couldn't afford a hundred dollars a month. Right. So it just falling on the, you know, falling on the floor, they're wasting their effort. Right. So, so there's sometimes it's not, it's not a big change. Sometimes it's a little change. Sometimes if you're, you've got a CRM and I say, okay, that's great for your existing customers. How do you get new customers? Right. Go, well, I've got a CRM. Well, that doesn't get you new, new customers. Exactly. So you have to, you have to see which piece is missing. And these people that try to sell you their solution, you know, most likely they don't, they don't not trying to sell you the whole package because it's, well, it cost me five years, a lot of money to, to get to that point. A lot of companies were making good money. So why should we change? Right. They don't. I'm looking at trying to help the small businesses and then um, maybe something I told you before, but half the money from the marketing company is going to an animal conservation area. Well, so, you, you told me in a previous um, podcast, but you, I think you should tell the audience <laughs> <clears throat> in this podcast, because I don't, they don't know that. And I think it's so, it just warms my heart. Well, half the money from the marketing company, I'm slowly shutting down my software company, but half the money from the marketing company is going to a 25 acre animal conservation area. So I'm going to retire in 10 years in the middle of animal playground. And I think that's so wonderful. You had shown me some pictures and I was just, my heart like just warmed up. I thought it was just amazing. So it adds... You know, it's when I look at, I'm getting older, you know, and you look at where, where you want to spend the last third of your life, you know, you want to, what you want to do. Right. And, you know, that's the kind of my goals that I want to, I enjoy being around animals and taking care of them and the love they give back. I think that's like, that's what most people's dreams are, is to be able to make enough income to support themselves financially and live a comfortable life where they could be happy and then be able to do the things they always wanted to do, you know? And I think um, that's what society most struggles with is trying to trying to meet that level of success that they're, they're so, especially small businesses, you know, a lot of them just strive to make payroll, and, you know, some of them don't even take pay, pay for themselves because they can't afford to. They just keep putting back in the business to keep making it running. And they're just making their bills and life is hard, you know, and that's where you come in and you help these businesses so they can get past that and they could actually make a substantial amount of money where they could live comfortably and then they could actually do the things they love to do when they get, they're getting ready to retire, or even before retirement, depending on how well they, you know, because the more money you make, the, the more time you can, you can maybe make for yourself and do the things that you really love. You know, one of the first, I like taking companies, you know, I, like, I love small businesses, but companies that are making five, 600,000, they don't see how they can get over that million dollar mark. Right. And in almost all cases, it's taking the owner out of the way. Because 
They want to be make all the decisions. Yeah. They can't they can't go on vacation because you know they have to be there and the place is gonna fall apart. Yeah. We not only grow but make make the company more efficient in the money in how they're spending what they're spending the money on and then putting a portion towards marketing so we can grow. But unless you have a, you have to have a solid foundation in your business. Otherwise the marketing just going to fall on the floor. Right. And Oh my God, I see that all the time. I see when, when small businesses, especially the owner, when they've created the business, it becomes their baby. And then they get this thing in their head where they don't think that they can just take a step back. Nobody could do it better than them. Nobody's going to make the right decisions better than them. Nobody is going to make sure this gets done or that gets done the right way if they're not there right over their heads. And sometimes I think that could work against you. What are your feelings about that? No, I think it does work against you. Um, you have to be able to um, have things in place doesn't mean you don't have checks and balances right? so that you can run a report and say, wait a minute, why is this dropping? Right. You got to have it. And the other thing is if you're in the way making all the decisions, when you go to sell your business, your business is you. Yeah. So Very true. you have businesses sell on customer database. Yeah. Which is great. But all the systems, and if you sell in the, if you're selling the customer base, then it's how much income you're making off of those people. But they have to believe that they can help those people along the way. If you're going to sell your business as a whole, then it has to operate without you. Yeah. So it's you're looking at building value into your business, and how much does your value increase each year? Right. Right. I th and I think that's a really good um, point because so I see so many people making that mistake. And then I see businesses that are making over a million dollars. You know, that's one thing that they stress is taking a step back from the business and letting the people in the business do the, the work is be able to hire the right people to be able to get the job done right, to manage the business the proper way. And I see so many people with that mentality that I have to be there. I have to make the decisions. I have to do this. And those are the people I see struggling. And even though they have great potential, they're struggling, you know, and they're not, they're not reaching that point where they, 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 they should be. No. And you can be, you know, work yourself to death. You can make work hard to be poor. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't have to go to, I don't have a nine to five job, but you know, no, you got a, a nine to 10 job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I talk to people, you know, having a small business for 30 years, you know, working out of my house for 30 years, I, you know, plus the previous structure from the military, you know, yeah. I, I like to help small businesses and I, I talk about a lot of things, you know, I want to get their, their marketing going, you know, I can help them, but you know, if they just want to talk about my business, you know, what's going on with it, you know, I, I'm always happy to help in that direction. And then I have a team of people that I call on financial planners and all, because I try to get, the right people to help them or look at things if they're open to it, you know, right. you down the relationship. First things I want to do is help them get some money and take away that pain point a little bit, a little yeah. bit here, and then start building trust as I go. And then we can go further into it. You know, it's, I talked to a financial planner. I says, you know, you, you don't walk into a business and five minutes later saying, okay, where's your checkbook? Let's go through it and see what you're doing wrong. Right. You, you got to gain that trust first. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. And it all goes back to trust, you know, communication and trust, you know, our whole conversation, really the two, the two main keys, you know, we didn't say the words, we said trust a lot, but 
really it's it's communication and trust well we did actually talk a lot about communication because it was like we talked about you know ai we talked about being able to you know going from one website to then seeing who the real person is and it's two different people you know you really have to have that communication and that trust and once you have those two things you could actually go a long way with your client and actually you profit and the client profits as well so you know it's a win-win situation yeah, and even on communication, when you're sending a text to somebody or you're sending an email to them, be clear. Yeah. You know, I get I get emails all the time that say, Oh, you wanna you wanna come to a a webinar on Thursday, but there's no time. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'll get something I, I know that they're talking, know what they're talking about. And I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've gotten quite a few of those myself. Like they, 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 you have no clue what they're talking about. And I'm like, is this a real email? I'm like, who wrote this? You know, I'm like, oh my God. And if they write an email like that, can you imagine what they're like in person? And these are the people have to think about, you know? Yeah, I, I do some of it you know, to help them. But, you know, I'm like, especially I get, you know, do you, do you want to come to our webinar? We're all excited and all this, all this smoke and mirrors. And I'm like, okay, when, you know, you don't include a time. Yeah. Or they'll say two o'clock and then I'll send back what time zone. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> these are things you have to know you know it's like you know and people don't you know and, and if you write in an email that doesn't look like it's not it doesn't have a lot of thought in it the first thing that's going to come to someone's head well if the email looks like that i can only imagine what the the webinar is going to be like you know and then they're yeah. not going to want to do it you know there is software that can tell you the grade level if you're writing oh really yeah and if um they say now that you should I think it's up to five and fifth grade and fifth and a half grade. But, you know, if it if it takes a a college degree to understand your your email, maybe that's the audience you're looking for. Right. But, um, you know, you can tell when somebody's in their own world. I always they you know, they say like between fifth and eighth grade is what you're supposed to write like when you when you're writing emails and you're writing to people, you know, because there are a lot of people I, I've worked with, either doctors or scholars, and they write on a completely different level. And I understand what they're saying, but I, I guarantee you that 98% of, of society is not going to understand what they're saying, you know, and, you know, you try to explain that to people, you have to speak on a average level you have to get the message across clear and concisely and easy to understand you know we were talking earlier about having bullet points you know being people aren't going to spend more than a few seconds reading your email yeah mm -hmm. so if you know i i've started reading emails and look and it's you know it take me 20 minutes to read it <laughs> i don't think so yeah, I like bullet points. I like just having one clear, concise sentence and then boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, and then closing it and then, you know, and then, you know, having a call to action, you know, and then leaving it like that. And I think people appreciate that because they don't like, they don't have time. They, you know, and if they have something really easy that they can go through in two seconds and they say, wow, this could help me. And then boom, something happens, you know, and you, you create either a sale or you create someone to come to your webinar or, you know, but it has to be, like you said, clear, concise, and easy to read. And people that are making websites and landing pages, look at it through your cell phone. Yeah. Over half the people now are using their cell phones to surf the internet. A hundred percent. Yeah. And if you're, if your website or your landing page, you know, is they have to scroll left and right and enhance it and all this, they're going to get tired of it pretty quick. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It needs to be clear and concise because mostly people are doing everything on phones nowadays. They're not using the desktops. You know, you have a small proportion of people using the desktops and a majority of the people on their phones doing everything on their phones now. It's very true. 
Now, before we go and before we close up with a couple of takeaways, I just have one. We, we'll talk about this in, in our next podcast, but you maybe you can give people you brought up something, you know, for shortly that I thought was such a great thing. We talked about like, you know, if you're selling a certain type of, of product or service and it's like four hundred dollars, but you're going to a group that has no money and you're not going to make money. How, if you're at, you know, one, how do you know when you're, when you're marketing to the wrong audience? And then how do you change that? How do you, if you have to get a high ticketed audience or you need, you need a, you know, a specific type of audience that, you know, is going to purchase that product or has the money to purchase it. How does a person recognize, Hey, you know, maybe I, I I'm marketing myself to the wrong audience and two, how do you change your audience so you could actually, you know, start scaling upward and start making money? But the, the first thing comes with your mindset. You know, mm -hmm. you act like you've got more money than maybe you do. Right. Not, not in a, not in a bad way. Yeah. 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 But, um, And then you, Talk to your customers. When somebody buys from you, ask them, you know, what what triggered you looking at me? Because you're trying to define that target audience. Mm, very and good these, idea. These web scrapers, you can look for companies that have 10 employees. You know, if I'm going to sell a high ticket where I do everything for the company, I want the company to be making 300000 mm -hmm. So they can afford my fee. Yeah. Um. You know, and those are just high, high tickets. Um, mm -hmm. But you want to look at who bought from you. And then in web scrapers, you can say, I need a company making more than 300,000. Right. I want to have more than, I sell an HR package. So I wanted to have more than eight employees. Right. And check all those boxes when you're pulling your list. Mm -hmm. You can come out in your, LinkedIn profile and say that, you know, we look at bigger companies, you know, it's, it's as important to attract the right people as to push away the wrong people, because you don't want to, you don't want somebody to come looking for your product that can afford a hundred dollars when you sell $400 and then want to spend half an hour because they're trying to understand your product and see if they can afford it now when you know you can't, they can't Right. So be clear ahead of time. And it's, it's all about that clear message, clear communication. You know, sometimes some products work different on different social media platforms. So yeah. find, find the right one, see what your competition is doing. Look at them. Right see what keywords they're using but if you if you define it not to to make sure the message is clear that saying you know i i take companies that are making between 500 and 800,000 and bring them over that million dollar mark right i'm not going to get somebody that's got a hundred thousand dollar startup because they're not looking for a million dollars so you want to you can be clear without alienating people or sounding wrong yeah. You just have to be clear on that message. Same thing with your emails. Um, mm -hmm. In a sales funnel, we have eight email sequences because we look for different pain points. What right. is keeping you up at night? And if they're still interested, you know, if they haven't unsubscribed, <laughs> then they mm -hmm. get the next one. If they go to your landing page, you can further explain it. But I, I think it's important to be clear and if you're just going to go out as pulling email addresses to do a cold email, you can definitely filter those. If yeah. you out to posts on your LinkedIn profile, you can put examples even in there that I took a, a $300,000 company to 500,000 in 18 months. Right. So you can kind of give that clue that that's not really your, your person. And then um, in the first emails, your first correspondence, you know, set up a, a 15 minute zoom call and say, this is, you know, this is what it is. Everybody is afraid of their competition. They want to hide their prices, but you know, if, if you come out with your prices and say, this is the type of audience, you're going to get less calls 
But if you if you do a sales funnel and you got ten thousand leads going into that sales funnel, yeah, you want a couple calls a day, anyways. Right. Exactly. You know, make them make them highly qualified leads. Yes. So if you're if you're feeding that, you know, I don't care if I'm feeding that sales funnel ten thousand leads if the sales funnel is filtering out all the ones that don't apply. You know, I think that's such a good point because so many people, they think more is better. Well, you know, I'm, I'm only, you know, I want to get X amount of people, but what's the point if most of those people can't afford what you're trying to sell? You'd rather get, let's say, 100 people versus 100,000 and those 100 people can actually afford you and they're going to they're going to purchase your product. You know, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it's better even like you can have you can you can have 10 people who are interested in your high ticketed product. And that's all you need. You don't need to have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people come into your website or come in, you know, answering your emails or clicking onto your your newsletter. It could be that that small group of people that are actually able to afford you and that need somebody like you, correct? Yeah, and can appreciate what you're doing. You know, I need, I only really want 10 because I, my high ticket, because I want to treat the high ticket people as important. You know, I want to treat them exactly. so, that, so that they, you know, it's kind of selfish and that I want them to stay 10 years. Yeah. I don't want to go in try to interview another 10 you know right i want to keep those so my high tickets i i put a lot of time and effort and communication in but yeah it's it's a i try to i have a way of telling people that if you have the right marketing you don't need salespeople. you need customer service and order takers yes mm -hmm. that's what i'm telling people that they should be don't look at all these I guess, I guess use the word slimy or, you know, trying to talk people into something Yeah, and then have them next week ask for a refund because they thought about it that night and, you know, say, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. You know, be honest with them and set up for the long-term relation. Yeah. That relationship. I know that sometimes it's hard when you're starting out and, I've got to pay my mortgage this month. I need a couple, you know, I need a few hundred dollars more. Yeah. But usually those type of deals, you know, end up backfiring in the long run, you know, and everybody does what they got to do. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, my kid needs new shoes or whatever, but <laughs> you know, it, it's, you got to be aware that at least I am anybody that I get into a high ticket, I tell them that we're going to be, working together for 10 years so right. you know if if you don't like the way I do things and tell me now you know let's not waste our time exactly exactly I think that's a great mentality and a great way to approach it also I think. it also hurts your reputation because those are the people that are going to write a bad review of you yes mm -hmm. I think it's very important like you said, to have maybe 10 people, high, high ticketed people, put all your time and effort into those people and have a long-term relationship because you'd rather have a long retention span with that consumer than, than just to, to take care of them once or twice and then it's done. Yeah, when before I built the marketing company, I went 20 years without having a marketing budget. Wow. I didn't market at all because I had residual income coming in. Right. Everything I do is residual income and people say, well, I'll give you two months free if you give me, you know, a thousand dollars now, otherwise it's a hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is at the end of next year, you've got to resell them. Yes. If it's a hundred dollars a month and it's coming off their credit card, they're not going to, as long as things are going okay. They're not going to think so much about it. But if you're telling them that, oh, I come for another thousand dollars, they think about it. Yeah. So I tell people to, you know, um, look for the long term, look for residual income. I this one lady was doing, added a service and said, well, 
it was $89. But if you buy two services, the third one's free. Mm -hmm. I says, okay, that's $160. Charge them. And it's once a month. I said, charge them $70 a month forever. Right. And Much she hadn't thought about that because otherwise after they get their free one, you know, then they, she has to resell it for another two and then free. And I said, no, just change it to $70 a month. It's, it's more affordable for them. Yeah. And they're not going to think, they're not going to think about canceling it, you know, as long as you're helping them, as long as you're re delivering the results. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's a, a excellent, excellent point. Cause that you see so many people market it like that, you know, and you know, when you, when you do one, res, one residual price and you just, and you keep satisfying them, then, you know, more than likely they're going to keep, you know, purchasing it month by month by month. And they don't even think twice after a while, you, you become yeah. kind of a, a part of their, of their business life, you know, and they just, they just pay without even thinking because they need you now and they see your quality, they see your worthiness and they, it's just, it's not even uh it's something they think about. They just do. Yeah. It's like paying the electric bill, right? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Residual income is just great. You know, I, lo I love the residual income. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people lack is they go week by week. They don't know how much is coming in. And that's what I think stresses so many, you know, beginners and, and small business owners. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're a startup and or something happens, you know, your kids tuitions do or whatever, and you got to you got to make some money in that that changes things, but just have to be aware that um, it affects the long term. Yes, it does. Very so. Now, if we had to like, from everything we talked about today, if you want to give a, a few takeaways, because we, we hit a lot of really important points. You brought up a lot of great things. What, what kind of takeaways would you like to, you know, to, to point out to people, you know, from all the things we talked about and touched base today? I would say that look into AI with caution and use it to help your research, but don't copy and paste. Right. Um, make sure your foundation with SEO is is in place so people can find you mm -hmm. because they will look for you to validate. Yes. Um, communication with your customers to keep that residual income coming is important. People are looking for results. You know, I've got somebody sent me saying, oh, we had 100,000 impressions. Is that good? Well, I said, well, how many sales did you close? Yeah. It's the results that matter. Um, yes. You know, your, your, cust your customer list is important. You know, if if you had to run from a burning building and one thing you could grab up your customer list because then you could start over. Right. Um, in the, I'm trying to think of what else. We had so much fun. We did. We we hit a lot of great topics. We went from one point to the next, but it all flowed. And these are topics that you hear people talk about all the time that you know, that small businesses struggle with. And I I I I liked you know how you talked about scale and how you talked about you know changing the audience you know. And also I liked the the main thing too is, is that you don't have to you know strive for those hundred thousand customers or those ten thousand customers or those you know thousand customers if you have ten good clients that are willing to stay with you because you do such a great job you get residual income in and you could be making a very good living with just those, you know, 10 clients, you know, and, and by, by looking at, you know, certain companies, like you said, you scrape those companies, you can find out what companies make 300,000 or more that are looking for certain type of business. And then, you know, getting those customers and then just having, you know, X amount of customers and working with those high ticketed customers and then being able to just grow just from that small group of, of customers that you could actually devote all your time and effort into. Yeah, don't don't start 
bringing in new customers until you have a foundation to keep them for 10 years. Exactly. You know, because otherwise you're just throwing them on the floor. There's a lot of people that, oh, I need more sales, needs a phone ringing off the hook. Yeah. But they don't have any follow-up. If they don't close them the first phone call, they just throw them on the floor and get the next one. Right. Exactly. I think those are two topics that we could talk about too, is having, how do you get those, those, those consistent clients that, that want you every month, those that, and have that consistent residual income coming in. And then also, you know, the first time you don't close them, what do you do? You know, I think those are two great topics we could maybe, you know, in, in our next podcast, talk about with, uh, with our listeners. Yeah. And I guess the last piece is there's, three pieces to marketing, your foundation, your SEO, being able to be found, your sales, how your whole sales process goes with those micro steps, and then your CRM for residual income. Yeah. The first thing I look at when somebody says my marketing's not working is I look what piece is missing. Right. Right. And I think that's very important. And, uh, and I, I think it's, it's, uh, you know, those are, those are great, you know, things to, to focus on. And, uh, you know, and I like that you brought up the CRM because a lot of people don't even know what CRM is and they don't even know how to use it, believe it or not, you know, a lot of small businesses. And if they just take a little bit of time to, to learn it, you know, even an hour a day, they could, you know, it, it could actually help them tremendously. It can, you got to build that habit, right? Yes, you have to build that habit. True, very true. Well, Mark, this has been amazing. Like always, I love having you come on the show. I love, you know, talking about this. And everybody, Mark has his own uh, podcast. He is uh, doing a podcast series right now where he's touching base on a lot of important marketing issues that small businesses go through. And he's giving you the solutions on how to do it. And he's also, he has a lot of great services that he provides for um, people who are in small businesses, looking to grow, looking to get out of problems, looking how to, to get out of debt and looking how to get that, that residual income, you know, so they could live a comfortable life. So I will have um, Mark's information in our description box. So you could contact him along with the programs that, and that he does the free webinar and also the other programs that he has um, that are very, uh, uh, inexpensive, but very valuable. And Mark, can you tell everybody your uh, website so they have it, so they, they can go on? The um, the marketing class is 30waystomarket.com. My main website is DMA Consulting. No, no, it's not. It's the company name. Huh. The website is dmaworld.com. So, so go ahead. So if you want to learn more about what I'm doing and... Uh, See my puppies, they're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and remember that he's given a great portion to help in other animals and 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 to he's going to be uh, doing a lot of things. So you can see where Mark's heart is. His heart is in the right place. He wants to help people. He wants to help animals. He wants to help the world. So Mark has a great experience that goes back, you know, for decades. His experiences is very valuable. And like he mentioned, he started in the military in the 80s, and he was one of the first people to work on AI. He knows the ins and outs of marketing, and he is willing to work with anybody who wants to improve their business and grow. So give Mark a call. He's always available. If you go to dmaworld.com, you can find him on his website, all his information and his phone number, and he'll be willing to talk to you, help you, and help you get to the levels that you want to uh, grow and, and hit your expectations in life. So Mark, it's been a great pleasure as always. Thank you so much for coming on on the show. And I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.